Let's talk about the future a little bit. How do you foresee the future of service operations in in our field, in the multifamily, maintenance multifamily? Uh, yeah. Do you see any emerging trends that you will find particularly exciting or that you know people are not maybe paying so much attention to, but they're about to happen? I think that so some emerging trends, you know, let's let's set technology aside for a second, right? And let's just talk about operations. I think that we find ourselves in 2023, 2024 in a in a very unique scenario that we've multifamily never seen ourselves in before or service related industry. And that is we're in a space where we had uh, highly skilled technicians. Um, that knew how to fix the boilers, knew how to fit, they knew the trade work, right? They could braze, they could solder, they could, they could do all these tasks. As that generation retired, their, the next generation was not trained at an equal rate to replace them. Then you're throwing uh, the pandemic, which kind of throws a huge wrench in things and people leave industries to go work in other industries and things like that. So there's a real, um, the, the, the talent pool is small of highly skilled, trained professionals that we're all shooting after to try to run these organizations and run these properties. And that's something different. That That's something that wasn't the case 10 years ago, necessarily. There are trends that are emerging are because of that fact, things that have been considered a constant or the normal in multifamily, doing snow removal in-house, right? 24-hour emergency on call in-house. In my opinion, in the next five to 10 years, those things are over. Those that we, there will be models that move to outsourcing um, because it will make sense for two reasons. It will eventually make sense financially, but we'll be forced into it because there's not going to be people to do it. Plain and simple. There will not be people that are going to say when you say, yeah, we're going to hire you. Uh, but by the way, you're going to be on call 24 hours a day. We need you to respond on Saturday. They're going to say, no, thank you. Uh, we, buy, we need you to come out in the middle of the night and, and fix a busted pipe. They're going to say, no, thank you, but we'll pay you overtime. That's all right. I'd rather be with my family. I think I bring that up to say, I think we're certainly headed in that direction, but the pandemic accelerated the thought process, right? Where the entire world realized how valuable their time is. And prior to that, I know, you know, when I started in the industry, it was like, I would sell you all my time, right? You want me to work a double? You want me to work the weekend? Sure, I'll work overnight and come in the next morning at seven o'clock. No problem, just pay me. That is a, a paradigm shift and a fundamental change in this whole thing in the world that 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 has an impact on, on what we do. And that is, you can't buy people's time. They come in at three in the morning for a few hours on call. They don't want to report the work the next day, right? Like they want to get their eight hours sleep. So a lot of people would say, well, you know, these people are lazy. Right. Um, these people are lazy. They don't want to. And, and and I think what I would say is they value their time. And so from an owner's perspective, it's a drastic thing to be able to take and say, we're going to be buying everyone's time constantly to do snow removal at a reduced rate to do these things. And now it's in a space where you can no longer buy the time. It doesn't matter what dollar amount you associate to it. It's not for sale. That has huge implications on service operations, how we operate, how we recruit, how we take and um, assess talent, like everything. It literally has a ripple effect across the board that everyone feels. So I think that is one of the biggest emerging trends that we're slowly going towards. And for the outsourcing piece, it's simply, again, there's not a talent pool there or a feeder system. And in my opinion, it won't be there for another five years. It'll be five years before trade schools are able to ramp up and start pushing out. And I'm not talking about Lincoln Tech or some of these vocational, you know, regional schools necessarily. I'm talking about on the job training. You show up, you've done it, you have the experience, you know how to fix HVAC in a multifamily setting or a facility setting. You know how to do electrical work. You know the work. So I think there's a disconnect there and there's a gap and it'll be five years, maybe more before we start to see an influx of another generation coming in uh, that can fill that void.